Welcome to Lecture 11 of Electrical Engineering 525. In this lecture, we'll move on to um, Section 3 of Chapter 6, which is about the Yagi Uda Array. And we're going to spend a couple of lectures talking about this uh, rather important section. Now, to begin to get an idea of uh, how the Yagi Uda array works, let's begin by looking at problem 6.3-3 in your book. And we will work with a slightly modified version of this problem. So, if you look in the uh, book, in your textbook, at this problem, you will see that uh, with only a few minor changes, what the book says is the following. It says uh, phasor diagrams, and, and by the way, in uh, the statement of this problem, you'll notice that I'm putting parentheses around the word diagrams because in our solution of the problem, we'll just work directly with the phasors. We won't work with the diagrams. If you would prefer to work with the diagrams, you can, but uh, your your final answer would really, to be honest, I think that unless you're very accurate at your with your drawings, your final answer is gonna be more accurate if you use the phasors themselves rather than trying to work with the diagram. So, <coughs> um, in, our, in our solution, we'll work with the phasors directly, and that's why I've put uh, uh, parentheses around the word diagrams. But anyway, starting then, uh, phasor diagrams are often helpful in obtaining a rough idea of about how arrays perform. To illustrate, use phasor diagrams to obtain the relative far zone field values in the end fire directions of the two element parasitic array of figure 618a and i.e. what they want you to do is to find the front to back ratio to do this find the total phaser at each element location including the spatial phase delay due to the element separation assume the amplitudes of each element are unity and the phases are minus 88 degrees for the driver and 81.1 degrees for the parasite. Now, first of all, uh, this figure 6-18a uh, in the book looks like this. <coughs> Here is the positive z direction. And the driver is here at this location. And it is to the right of the parasite. And this is important to know, as you'll see as we go through the problem. Alternatively, of course, you could uh, view this as, as the parasite being to the left of the driver. So either way you wish to look at this. And the uh, distance between the parasite and the driver is 0 0.04 lambda. Now again, what we're interested in, if you look again at the problem, it says we want to look at the relative far zone field values in the end fire directions of this two element array. Well the end fire directions here uh, as we discuss right here the end fire directions are uh, this direction the positive z direction and the negative z direction. So that would be uh, the positive z direction would be theta equals zero degrees the negative z direction would be theta equals 180 degrees. So we're interested in the relative uh, far zone patterns in those two directions. And so the way that this will go, uh, first of all, to look at the uh, pattern in the uh, positive z direction, or in other words, in the theta equals zero degrees direction, what we will do, we already have the uh, excitation here at the driver. Remember, at the driver, it has an amplitude of 1. I'll, I'll just remind you here, it says the amplitude of each element is, one, is unity. So, the amplitude here at the driver is 1, 
and the phase at the driver is minus 88 degrees. Okay, but we also need to find out the field at that location because this is the location closest to uh, uh, the theta equals zero degrees direction. This is the, this is for this array, this location right here represents the location farthest in, in or, or uh, yeah, let's say farthest in the direction we're now trying to calculate the field. So um, we're, ca we're going to calculate all field values here at this point that is uh, farthest in that direction. And now, and I might as well go ahead and say in your test, you're going to have another element in here and it will be to the right of the driver. So you have this one parasite to the left of the driver and then you'll have the driver itself and then you'll have another parasite to the right of the driver. And uh, in that case then, when you're trying to find the uh, pattern in the theta equals zero degrees direction, then the farthest most, or, or the far, the farthest most, um, or the far most, I should say, the far most element in that direction will be this, uh, this uh, right parasite. And so you'll need to calculate, you'll have, you'll be given in the problem, the amplitude and phase at that parasite. But then you also need to find what the driver's field is at the parasite and what this parasite's field is at that parasite. All of that will be necessary to find the field in the theta equals zero degrees direction. And then on the other hand, when you're trying to find the field in the 180 degree direction, okay, you will have the amplitude and phase of this parasite already, but you and it's the farthest most uh, uh, element in the direction of interest in that case and so we'll also have to find the field of the driver at that location and the field of this parasite over here at that location so um, that's just a preview of what you'll be doing for your uh, first uh, test problem or group of problems uh, but for for this one we just have the two elements rather than three so again, then uh, we have the, uh, the excitation and the phase here. The amplitude is 1, the phase is minus 88 degrees. So that, we say E at the driver, and once again, we're, we're calculating the field here at the driver because it is the element that is farthest in the direction toward which we want to calculate the fields when we're calculating at theta equals zero degrees. Now when we're calculating at theta equals 180 degrees, then we need to calculate at this element because it's the one that's farthest uh, in that direction. Okay, so E at the driver, the, the electric field at the driver is equal to the electric field of the parasite at the driver plus the electric field of the driver itself. Now what that means is, you know, you have a current here um, on the parasite and this current will produce an electric field but this electric field is starting right here and it will have a phase shift by the time it gets over here to the driver so that's why we have to specify carefully here we want the electric field of the parasite but at the driver and then we also want the electric field of the driver, and that one doesn't have any phase shift because we're, cal I mean, if you wanted to, you could say electric field of the driver at the driver if you wanted to be very uh, specific about it. But here, what we mean is this is, there's no extra shift that has to be counted for this one because we're looking right at the location of the driver, which is where this um, uh, field is being uh, um, created by the presence of the current on the driver. So, this is the expression that we want to evaluate at theta equals, uh, to, to, to find the pattern in the theta equals zero degree direction. And so let's proceed. Okay, the, 
field of the parasite at the driver, okay, for the parasite, the amplitude is 1, and the phase was 81.1 degrees. But then this distance between the parasite and the driver is D, and so we're going to have a phase shift of beta D for this wave traveling from the parasite to the driver. So this will be a, a phase delay, and, and it will be, my, so that's why we get the minus sign, so minus beta D. So we'll have 1 with a phase of 81.1 .1 degrees minus beta D. That's the field of the parasite evaluated at the driver. Then we also have the driver itself, which is amplitude of 1 as well. And we're told that its phase up here is minus 88 degrees. So this represents the field of the driver at the driver. Okay, now to finish this problem, you can see that that's all we had to do, really. And now, I mean, this problem is really quite simple once you realize that. Uh, now we have to figure out what beta D is. Well, beta is 2 pi over lambda, and D, we've already been told, is 0 0.04 lambda. So when we do this calculation, we get 0 0.08 pi radians, or four, when we multiply that by 180 over pi to um, translate it to degrees, we'll get 14.4 degrees. So now taking that uh, calculation into effect up here, we get that the electric field at the driver is equal to 1 times 81.1 .1 degrees minus 14.4 degrees plus 1 times minus 88 degrees. Well, 81.1 .1 degrees minus 14.4 degrees is 66.7 degrees. So we have 1 at an angle of 66.7 degrees plus 1 at an angle of minus 88 degrees. And uh, now to get that into the uh, form of a single phaser, of course, uh, we can proceed as follows. We know that uh, this angle of 66.7 degre degrees is... Uh, that's the same thing as e to the j 66.7 degrees, which is cosine of 66.7 degrees plus j sine of 66.7 degrees. And likewise, this angle of minus 88 degrees is the same thing as e to the j minus 88 degrees, which would be cosine of 80, minus 88 degrees plus j times the sine of minus 88 degrees. Now, the two cosine terms will add together to give you the real part of the electric field at the driver. And then the two cosine terms uh, should be added together to give you the imaginary part of the electric field at the driver. And when you do those two calculations, you'll get 0 0.4304 minus J 0 0.0809. And now to put that into uh, the so-called polar form or phaser of the phaser uh, we get the magnitude will be the square root of this squared plus this squared so we have the square root of uh, of uh, 0 0.4304 squared plus negative uh, 0 0.0809 squared and then the uh, angle will be the inverse tangent of the imaginary part of the real part. So inverse tangent of minus 0 0.0809 over 0 0.4304. And if you uh, do this calculation, you'll find out that the magnitude is 0 0.4379 and the phase is minus 10.65 degrees. Okay. And now we'll do the uh, calculation in the 180 degree direction. So as we've already mentioned then, now for this calculation, we need to evaluate at the location of the parasite. And so now we're going to have to calculate the field of the driver at the parasite plus the field of the parasite at the parasite. Okay, so let's proceed with that. So at theta equals 180 degrees, we get E at the parasite is equal to E of the parasite. And, and again, if you want to be real specific, you could say E of the parasite at the parasite plus E of the driver at the parasite. 
So uh, as we already know, E of the parasite is one angle of 81.1 degrees. And the um, field of the driver is one at an angle of minus 88 degrees. But again, we'll have this phase shift, a phase delay because of the field traveling from the driver to the parasite. Once again, the phase shift is minus beta D just as it was before. And so, uh, and of course, beta D then will still be minus, uh, or excuse me, beta D will still be positive 14.4 degrees, but we're subtracting that because it is a phase delay in both cases. So we get one angle at an angle of 81.1 degrees plus one at an angle of minus 88 degrees minus 14.4 degrees. Well, uh, minus 88 degrees minus 14.4 degrees is minus 102.4 degrees. So we have 1 at an angle of 81.1 degrees plus 1 at an angle of minus 102.4 degrees. Well, you can already see without even doing this calculation that this is going to be quite a small number because notice that these two uh, phasers here have the same magnitude and are almost exactly 180 degrees out of phase. So they're going to almost completely cancel each other. We can already see that. And of course, this is good because we want the electric field in the direction we here. This, this parasite is acting as a reflector so that the uh, field over here is very small. The field to the left in the 180 degree direction is very small and the field over here uh, uh, in the positive z direction is larger, much larger. So let's finish this calculation. Okay, so uh, as we did before then, we can um, take these two phasers and write the, the one at an angle of 81.1 degrees will be cosine of 81.1, excuse me, one times, and, and it is important to notice this because if, if the two um, elements had different magnitudes, then these magnitudes would play a, uh, an important role. But in this case, they're both equal to 1. So we have 1 an angle, uh, or one times cosine of 81.1 degrees plus J sine of 81.1 degrees plus 1 times a cosine of minus 102.4 degrees plus J times a sine of minus 102.4 degrees. And this ends up giving you minus 0 0.06 plus J 0 0.0113. And so now to put that in polar form, take the square root of this squared plus that squared. And then here, take the inverse tangent <coughs> of the imaginary part over the real part. And notice that uh, I'm, I'm keeping the negative sign associated with uh, the real part here. Just as in the uh, previous case uh, up here, where the negative sign is with the imaginary part, I kept it in the numerator with the imaginary part. Here in the uh, in this case, since the negative sign is associated with the real part, I'm uh, keeping the negative sign here in the denominator. Now, if you're doing this calculation on a calculator, it probably won't make any distinction between those two. But uh, if you're using some programming language, for instance, like Fortran, in Fortran, they have a function ATAN2, and there it makes a difference whether the negative sign is in the numerator or in the denominator. It will help, it will automatically, if you use the ATAN2 function, it will automatically um, help you to decide which quadrant your angle should be in. And that's uh, relevant right here because if you do this calculation, you'll get 0 0.061 for the magnitude. But if you just use a calculator that does not distinguish between having a negative sign in the denominator and a negative sign in the numerator, you will get uh, an angle here. Instead of 169.33 degrees, you'll actually get 169.33 minus 180. So it's, uh, I guess, minus 10.67 degrees is the answer that you will get. But minus 10.67 degrees uh, refers to a complex number in the fourth quadrant, which means that it should have a positive real part 
and a negative imaginary part. But this actually, this, this complex number has a negative real part and a positive imaginary part. So we should expect, based on that, we should expect an answer in the second quadrant. And so what we do is we take that minus 10.67 degrees that we obtain when we do this. If we do this with an ordinary calculator, you'll get an answer of minus 10.67 degrees and then add 180 to it to get the correct answer in the second quadrant of 169.33 degrees. And now to finish up this problem, again remember that if you look at the statement of the problem, what they actually wanted us to find was this front to back ratio, which is just the ratio of the magnitude in the theta equals zero direction to the magnitude in the theta equals 180 degree direction. And so we found out that magnitude in the theta equals zero degree direction right here, 0.4379 and the magnitude in the 180 degree direction is uh, um, 0 0.061. So uh, the front to back ratio is 0 0.4379 divided by 0 0.061 or 7.18. And when we uh, translate that to dB, it's 17.1. We get that by taking 20 times the log base 10 of 7.18, and we get 17.1. So this is 17.1 dB, and that is the desired uh, front-to-back ratio for this problem in dB. Uh, so I hope you conclude, you agree that this is actually, when all is said and done, this problem may be a little bit tedious, <coughs> but it's actually a pretty uh, easy problem. And so now uh, on test 11, we will have a, a problem, I'm calling it problem group one. There will be, a, a, you know, one, probably two or three problems in the group, but they will all be uh, concerned with a problem like, just like what we've just described. In fact, we'll still have, we'll still have a driver, we'll, we'll still actually have this situation um, of figure 6.18a where we have a driver in this location of uh, amplitude 1 and uh, phase of minus 88 degrees and then we'll have one parasite to the left of that it'll be 0 0.04 lambda to the left of the driver it will have an amplitude of 1 and it will have a phase of 81.1 degrees. So all of that will be the same as in that problem. But then in this uh, test 11 problem group one, we assume that at a location 0 0.02 lambda to the right of the director, uh, I'm sorry, this should be to the right of the driver. So 0 0.02 lambda to the right of the driver, there is another parasitic element, and this one has an amplitude of 0 0.9 rather than 1, and its phase is minus 172 degrees. And so um, I'm, I say here what is the front-to-back ratio in this case, but it's likely that I'll ask you in, test, uh, in this uh, first group of problems on test 11, it's likely that I'll also ask you maybe uh, a few other problems. I'll make that uh, test available soon, but just um, go ahead and proceed with the analysis for this case, and, and just to make absolutely sure you understand what we're saying here, okay, we have a parasite, and then we have the driver, and then another parasite, and the magnitudes are 1, 1, and 0 0.9, and the phases are, um, let's see, let me refresh my memory now, 81.1 degrees here, 81.1, and this is minus 88 degrees for the driver, and now it's uh, minus 172 degrees for the parasite to the uh, right of the driver, and the distance here, this distance 
is 0 0.2 lambda and this distance is just as in the problem we just did this distance is 0 0.04 lambda okay so that so go ahead and start the analysis of that problem and be prepared to uh, um, state the front to back ratio for uh, that problem again we'll we'll be calculating here's the here is the positive z direction and we'll be looking in the in fire directions theta equals zero degrees and theta equals 180 degrees And I actually believe that in view of the length of time it took to describe that problem, I think that I'll just stop right there rather than um, uh, proceeding to the next problem. This, you, as you can see right here, uh, the next problem I intend to discuss is problem 6.3-4, but it's a rather involved problem. And so um, rather than making this an overly long lecture, I'll just stop right here. So actually, we will probably uh, take a total of three lectures uh, to cover uh, section uh, three of chapter six. But that's, uh, that's fine. It reflects the fact that this is uh, an important section for us to know about. So I think that I'll conclude that right there. And that will be the end of a lecture 11. So uh, good luck.